Welcome to season three of the Property Management Podcast. My name is Tony Mayala, and today I am here with Fred Tracy, Rachel Graham, and Rachel Palmashano. Welcome, folks. It looks like we're in uh, season three, huh? We are in season three. We are here, and sorry for the wait, listeners, but we're back. We're back. Yes. Usually, and usually we're, uh, Tony and Fred and I have been crammed into our tiny little studio uh, back at the office, and uh, now we've not seen each other in person in, well, really since March of 2020, like most of the rest of the world. Yeah, a couple of things have happened since then. The last time we recorded this was November of last year, so the first thing that happened, everybody pretty much knows. Uh, <laughs> um, Actually, Buildium is now a real page company for those who haven't heard. And we recently released the 2021 industry report, state of the property management industry report, excuse me, which is a huge deal. And, and this year's I, I, I think is our best yet. So with that said, let's, uh, let's talk about this episode. We, we spoke with Matt Easton from Leasing University, the founder of Leasing University. And wow, what a prolific content creator that guy is. Matt is what I like to call multidimensional at what he does. He started Leasing University. He's a content guru. He puts out an episode every single day on his YouTube channel. He wants to go away from the, the mindset of a property manager just being a gatekeeper. He wants to train people on how to have skills on how to close the sales in the leasing process. And he digs on to the why. And what I love about Matt is that when he is, when he's talking, he is so passionate about this topic, both as an educator, but also because he believes that the difference that he can communicate to property managers is about enforcing and reinforcing the relationship. So I won't give away the rest of the interview here, but that, uh, that was a very exciting part of the conversation. Yeah. And as a renter myself, I've rented like 10 apartments over the years and it's so refreshing to hear from someone who really understands the pain and all of the stress that leasing can be for a renter and I, he really understands this the whole cycle so that was great to see yeah i think that's exactly right it's his philosophy is what separates him from so many others in the space and that's precisely why we wanted to name this episode leasing for longevity how your actions today will affect you downstream and of course i feel like that isn't ever more true than it is right now, given everything that's going on with COVID, uh, yeah. because of the potential pent up demand that's happening. Retention is still high, but you know, what's gonna happen after all of this hopefully blows over soon. And I think he, we, we talk about that, so I don't wanna spoil it either. But with that, uh, you know, I think it's uh, about time to roll the episode. What do you say, Fred? Roll it, Tony. Happy is a good time. All right, welcome to season three of the Property Management Podcast. My name is Tony Maiola, and today I am here with Matt Easton of Leasing University. How are you doing today, Matt? I'm doing fantastic, Tony. How are you doing? Uh, great. It's, it's awesome to have you on the show. Again, first episode of season three. We're all really excited to, uh, you know, just to do it better and better each time. And, uh, you know, of course, have amazing guests like yourself. Um, and, you know, one of the things we're going to be talking about for everybody out there uh, is leasing. We're in a very interesting spot right now when it comes to leasing. If you're a property manager, uh, just because of how COVID has panned out, uh, the trends that we've been seeing, and uh, we're looking to really get into that and, and ask some of the tough questions, kick the tires together, and uh, and and think about how we can make our processes better. So, Matt, with that said, could you uh, you know tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. Yeah. And first off, Tony, it's a it's an honor and a privilege to be kicking off season three here. I'm a big fan of the podcast. As far as the industry goes, you guys are, are right at the, the top there as far as uh, content. So it's a real honor to be here. Um, I'll give you a background, a lot of background on me. A lot of people uh, know me through Leasing University. If you search YouTube, if you search Google for anything, how to lease apartments, uh, you know, you'd be hard pressed to find people other than me out there. I've really dedicated my life to the sales process of apartments. Uh, in the past, I had came from a management consulting background. So worked with everybody from the American Customer Satisfaction Index to Bank of America, ADP, those large Fortune 500 brands. And then on the personal side, became an owner and investor myself. And that's where I began to see this disconnect uh, as I looked at properties that I was invested in there just didn't seem to be a sales process that really fit with what today's renter needs. Um, and that seemed to get worse and worse over the years. Uh, in 2007, 
I was involved with an apartment marketing company, uh, spent a number of years there. And during that time, the concept of leasing university started to boil to the surface. We became an official offering in early 2019, and it's just been uh, gangbusters since then. We've just been growing and growing at uh, clips because we're really meeting a need that it seems like the industry has. Oh, 100%. And for those of you who actually don't No, uh, Matt has quite a following, uh, creates a lot of amazing content himself. uh, And, you know, I think it's inspiring. And it's also, you know, great for property managers who want to continually improve their processes around leasing. So be sure to check out his YouTube channel. Just a little plug there for you. For the plug, they're totally free. We try to put a video out almost every day. And these are real world things that uh, property managers are facing every day. We encourage the audience to leave comments, leave questions, and I do my best to personally answer every single question that comes through that channel. All right. So with that said, let's kick off the interview. Um, So we talked a little bit about uh, leasing up front, but what do you think as far as the old way of doing things in leasing? What do you think isn't really working anymore about that? Yeah, great question, Tony. So the industry has has really changed and it's completely different than it was before. And and for two reasons, Tony, number one is today's renter has access to more information than ever before. Literally just in the last 24 months, there's a hundred times more information available to a renter online, available to them right up, right on their phones, right on their tablets, wherever they need it, whenever they need it, that information is already there. The second thing that's really changed is today's renter has more choices. Now, I may be dating myself here, but in the past, in the past, um, when people like me were going out and needing a lease, uh, the situation was very limited information. You know, we would go to the little kiosk newspaper stands. I'm, I'm really dating myself now. And you'd, you'd <laughs> pull, okay. Remember the old four rent guides and the magazines? You'd pull yep. those out, right? Or you'd go to the classified section in the newspaper and you were just hoping, hoping that there was an apartment that fit your budget that was available because there wasn't much information. So if there was choices, chances are you didn't know about them. And secondly, flat out, there just wasn't choices. So our culture has shifted. Today, more people are deciding to rent where they live than own a home, right? Investors, owners, operators, builders, they're smart. They've been building the product pretty consistently. What that has led us is it's led us to a great place in the industry. Never has it been more exciting to be in multifamily, but what's kind of lagging is that old training is still designed for a property manager to be more of a gatekeeper and an information provider, more of a librarian than a true sales consultant. And you can hear that, Tony, by calling just about any apartment community in the country. They're gonna be asking you all kinds of questions about your budget. They're gonna quickly, you'll hear them clicking away on their keyboard, checking pricing and availability, and they're never really learning about you and the why behind why you're moving. Uh, And it's just, it's not a sales process that's working when you have a customer base that has choices and information. Yeah, I love that how you mentioned the why. Because that's so important in everything that we do. Like I know at Buildium, whether that's releasing a product function or we're running a marketing campaign. And I think it just, it, it applies so well to property management and leasing because at the end of the day, if you don't understand someone's primary motivation for doing what they do, like how can you A, like we're not even talking about selling to them. We're talking about giving them what they want and what they need. Um, absolutely, 100%. Let me give you a quick example of that. Um, call a hundred uh, apartment communities today. You're probably going to see this exact same scenario play out a hundred times, unless you reach somebody that I've trained, tell them you want a two bedroom apartment. They're not going to dig into the why, right? But if we think about that, Tony, let's think about the different ways that I would need a two bedroom, right? First is you and I may be roommates. Okay. My need is completely different because I don't want to fight with Tony over who gets the the better bedroom, right? If I'm going to have my teenage daughter, by the way, her name's Bella. Hi, Bella. (laughs) If my teenage daughter is going to be in that second bedroom, well, guess what I care about? The bathroom, because I may or may not be tired of getting glitter all over my suits before I go to work, or I may or may not have stepped on a hot curling iron, 
I've done that, by the way. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. That must have been a hell of a street. If I'm going to use that second bedroom as an office, again, a totally different need set, right? Mm -hmm. So the way that we would present that apartment, if it was a roommate situation versus a teenage daughter situation versus an office situation, may be totally different. And how we select the product is going to be totally different. For example, I may have a floor plan that has a terrific little bathroom for Bella. I may have a floor plan that's a one plus a nook that really meets the needs of that individual looking for an office, but maybe fits their budget a little bit better. Again, you need to understand the why behind what they're telling you before you even start to try and present a product. Yeah, a hundred percent. And that's exactly why we don't really use the word tenants at Buildium. We try to, we try to stay away from it because uh, it's a very legal term, right? And the concept of home is essentially important to all of us. And and so when you say tenants, it sort of puts tenants into someone that is like a cog in the machine and they're not that important. I think, and you know, all of like property managers who like, they know how important it is and they know the amount of respect and honor that goes into the concept of home. Um, so that's why we say residents. And I think that's a really important concept. It's getting to know them as people. I agree with you 100%, Tony, and that's something that's a great, you just made a great example of something else besides the sales process that's left over from that old world of multifamily. You know, in the past, it was everybody uh, aspired to home ownership. That is not the case today. And our data at Leasing University shows that it's, we're going even more in the other direction of, hey, maybe it makes long-term financial sense for mm -hmm. me to rent, especially in a time like a pandemic where now I have that flexibility where if I want to leave this particular city and go to another city, I can chase the opportunities. The concept of being tied down to a home is, has totally changed. Therefore, we need to pivot as an industry and realize that we're not just providing temporary housing for somebody that's in an apartment because they're a student or they're in an apartment because they can't afford a house or they're in an apartment until they can afford a house. This is the lifestyle for many, many Americans. And those numbers are continuing to grow, Tony. Yeah. And that's a great point about COVID. I mean, you know, we're talking about things how, you know, theoretically they should be normally, but when you put COVID into the mix of that, well, you know, you've got, you know, many renters being in a precarious spot right now because of their financial state or their health. So, Absolutely. you know. Absolutely. So, what so we're seeing too, COVID yeah. really is just putting a spotlight on a lot of the issues that we have maybe been sweeping under the rug for a number of years in terms of customer service, resident service. Um, now with the tensions of COVID, we're having to address some of these issues. Right, yo, 100%. And that doesn't mean that it's easy. And we know that anybody who, who, who manages properties know that it's not you know, easy these days because you have to sort of still balance the financial equation with everything that's going on. Uh, and, and still serve your fiduciary duty. Uh, but what do you think is going on with the housing market uh, and leasing from where you sit uh, right now as far as the, the pandemic is concerned? Yeah, so from where I sit is, I think we're at a precipice, Tony, where we have been building product for close to a decade. But for the latter half of this decade, new construction has been gangbusters. Um, don't believe me, go try and buy an apartment community. It's, there's been very little product to buy, forcing people to build. Um, but we're now hitting this point, um, especially with the little dips we've had in the economy lately, that the industry is going to have to make a choice of whether or not they want to go one way or the other way. And the two choices they have are, hey, we can start to really, really focus in on our sales process on our resident experience, or we can buy into this race to the bottom. And unfortunately, a lot of folks, a lot of markets have been doing this race to the bottom of, listen, I just need to get my lease up occupied. I just need to get this building occupied. Let's come up with a rent special. Let's come up with a discount. Let's come up with something just to fill the building. What we're seeing happen is, Although you may get some short-term occupancy, you haven't really solved the problem and you're then creating this tsunami of potential 
uh, non-lease renewals when all of those leases come due. Because if you don't make a connection with that renter, right, from the very first moment that they call the property, if you're not establishing a connection with them, discovering what's going on in their life, what's important to them, what's valuable to them, well, all you're doing then is selling them on a promotion. And when it becomes renewal time, you better double, triple down on that promotion or else they're gonna to continue to move. So there's gonna be one class of operator that's gonna really, really make a connection with their residents. They're gonna keep that connection and they're gonna hold that resident. And then there's gonna be a whole bunch of people that are basically gonna be racing to the bottom, fighting over these transient renters that are gonna just move from place to place to place, uh, taking the best deal on each lease they sign. Yeah, and let me just say this. I think that you, know, you are seeing a lot of property managers try to figure out uh, how to balance that equation with renters. And from our 2021 State of the Property Measurement Industry Report, here's a stat for you. In 2019, just 16% of property managers said that attracting and retaining great residents was one of their top three priorities. Well, guess what? Over the past year, that whole number jumped by an unprecedented 29 points. So 45% of property managers are now saying residents are in their top three. That's a huge shift. And that just rep, that's a, I think that's a direct indicator of what's going on right now in the housing market. And again, the importance of focusing on residents and really, you know, getting to know them, uh, really making sure that your pre-screening is strong and still, yet still automated, yet still human. Uh, you know, again, not an easy thing to do, but a huge focus. Yeah. And, and, uh I'm going to double down on what you said that it's not an easy thing to do. If you don't have a process behind it, resident experience and sales can be a Herculean effort. I mean, we're not selling t-shirts here. We're not selling cups of coffee. We're not selling water bottles. This person, let's just think about this decision in front of them. Not only is this the most expensive decision that they're going to make, right? They have to go to bed there every night. They've got to wake up there every morning. They're going to build a life at this apartment community. So if you don't have a process of what am I going to say? What questions am I going to ask? How am I going to deal with these issues? You still can provide a great experience, but be prepared to only be able to work with one or two people a day, right? Because there's going to be so much fluff and you're not going to know, again, like the old training, I'm going to spend all this time trying to build rapport and I'm going to have this relationship that's going to take forever. That's not feasible for today's operators. They have to be able to build a relationship quickly, service that person quickly, explain to them why this community is right for them in a way that makes sense to that renter. And they need to be able to do that multiple times on any given day. Right. And use technology to help really supplement those efforts 100%. Um, in, a, in a way that is social and human and makes sense and isn't sort of, you know, uh, clunky uh, and as, you know, with messaging or with communications that come in at the wrong time. So really think through that whole thing is important. And, you know, you're talking about process. I think what we're getting to here, which is like a key point, and you mentioned this before, is what you're doing now as a property manager in leasing will have a huge downstream impact. Absolutely right. And, and, and I just want to be clear here because a lot of people listening to the podcast may be saying to themselves, oh, yeah, yeah, we have a process. But when, I, when boards of REITs call me in and I say, hey, do you guys have a process? They go, yep. And I say, okay, what exactly... Tell me the exact words that your people say when they answer the phone. They go, um, not sure. Great. Terrific. Okay. What exactly do they say to close the lease? Um, I don't know. Do you, do you want the apartment? Right. Or we've got some general ideas on that. How exactly are you able to understand the difference? And this is a big one, right? Nobody talks about this in the industry except me. When it comes to real estate, there's an objection and there's a complaint. There's no perfect apartment for anybody. So how do your people know what's really an, an objection that needs to be addressed or handled and what's just simply a complaint? When I talk to boards of REITs, they typically cannot answer those questions. If you don't know exactly what your people should say, when they should say it, why they're doing the things that they do, 
Well, then you don't have a sales process. What you have is good intentions, um, but you can't manage good intentions. That's where when we have terrific technology, and I know Buildium is world-class in providing that technology, that's when we can truly get the most out of our technology is when we also have a people process behind everything. Well, that, that's, that's very interesting and a hundred percent true. I think, you know, cause like we've been talking about, you have to balance that process. You have to make it human. Uh, but you know, first you have to understand theoretically, like all of the different steps that go into it. So how, how would you break down the steps to the process that, you know, PMs need? Yeah. So, so really simple. And again, this is the stuff that we think about all the time. So there's really, and probably nobody's ever talked to this about the listeners. There's five steps to a leasing process. Okay. It's really simple, but then you get into the intricacies of how these things flow. But let me just break down the five steps for you. Okay. I've got to greet the prospect. All right. Mm -hmm. And most, most property management companies out there, they greet in terms of, I hope they answer the phone. A lot of them still don't even answer the phone. I hope they get out of their chair and greet that prospect physically, but I have to have a greeting, okay? Now, the real professionals are, this is exactly what we say, and this is the why behind we do it, okay? But step number one, I got to greet the prospect. This is now going into step two is where the wheels completely fall off in the industry. I have to determine your wants and needs. Most property managers out there, most leasing agents have no clue how to determine a prospect's wants and needs, right? Besides, hey, what's your budget, right? Worst question you could ever ask. But got to greet the prospect, got to determine their wants and needs. At that point, once I know their wants and needs, I can then select an apartment and build value in that apartment. Leaving me with the last two, I'm going to make a proposal and then I'm going to close the lease. So greet the prospect, determine their wants and needs, select a unit and build value, select an apartment and build value, select a home and build value, depending on what type of community you have, and then make a proposal and close. Those are the five steps. Once you understand those and you understand the flow of how to move through those and what makes it easy and what makes your job more difficult, then leasing becomes a streamlined process that's fun, enjoyable, and anybody can do it. Yeah, I'm curious. Uh, obviously, each one of those steps in the process is important. Um, and really, if you mess up one of them or you're not doing something right in your process, you know, you're going to have, you're going to have issues. Um, starting off with the pre-screening, you know, this is, you know, of course, an interesting place uh, to start. Like, what are the right and compliant questions that property managers should be asking during pre-screening? Absolutely great question. And this is, this is something where our philosophies, my philosophies, the company's philosophies, really tend to differ from a lot of folks in the industry because the industry is typically still attached to that old world sales skill. So even the term pre-screening, I'm not personally a huge fan of that. And I'll tell you why. There's so many terrific technology companies out there. There's so many terrific marketing opportunities out there. Today's renter has more access to information than ever before. Our data shows that on average, 80% of the people calling your property are qualified to live there, right? By, by nature of going to apartments.com or no, no plug to apartments.com there, um, there's a million choices out there, but wherever they come to you from, that technology is pretty sophisticated, right? It's going to serve them up an apartment that they already know. Here's another thing, whether your renters tell you or not, most of them already know the price, right? It's readily available online. Unfortunately, most people try and pre-screen in terms of, I need to make sure that this person is qualified to live here. Now, if you have an epidemic where most of the people that you're talking to are not qualified to live there, that's not something that you change your sales process with. That's a discussion that you have with your marketing provider or your marketing team, right? Mm -hmm. That's a totally separate discussion. That's saying, hey, we're attracting the wrong leads. But for the most part, what our data shows is most communities are getting the right leads. And if they're working with a solid marketing company, they're getting enough of them. Where they're not focusing on their pre-screening is simple things like the big four. What's most important to you? Why is that important to you? Here's a big one that nobody asks. What do you want to see first when you get here? 
why do you want to see that first, right? Especially when you get somebody that's price, 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 and I don't know, the next thing that's most important to me is price, right? Right. Well, well, why is that important to you? If you really get a smart aleck, which you won't, they'll be like, because I'm broke and money's important. Fantastic. (laughs) That person that's like price, 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 I can't spend more than $782.37. When you ask them, what do you want to see first when you get here? Oh, I'd like to see the dog park. Oh, okay. Why do you want to see the dog park first? Oh, I just bought this pug. His name is Baby Yoda. I'll spend no amount of, there is nothing <laughs> that is not too good for Baby Yoda. I want to make sure that Baby Yoda <laughs> has suddenly that person that was price, 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 price. When you ask them what they want to see first and most importantly, the why, now all of a sudden they take their armor off and they yes. start to share with you what's really, really important. Yeah, because price like that is really just uh, the tip of the iceberg, and it, it doesn't get to the why like you're like you're saying. It doesn't get to it doesn't get you talking about Baby Yoda. Is there is there a real Baby Yoda? By the way, I don't. I've got a Great Dane, so <laughs> definitely not a Baby, baby Yoda. Yoda would not be the best name for my. Great Dane. <laughs> and, 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 and let me just put, let me just put one other seed in the listener's mind. All right, when we think about price on this. First of all, moving is something that I, my father was uh, Air Force, uh, and then he, he worked in maintenance, actually, uh, for a long time. But the most I've ever heard of somebody moving was 25 times, right? For most of us, we don't move that much in our life, right? right. A lot of us are moving to a new market. How is it that we continue to ask these prospects, what's your budget? I invest in apartment communities and don't know what the rent should be until I look at, you know, stacks and stacks of research data. Why are we not figuring out, okay, well, what's really important to that person so I can help select the best product for them? Because they may be way off base on price. They may be moving here from Broken Bow, Oklahoma, and think that $700 will get you a three-bedroom, you know, luxury apartment. We're focusing on the wrong things right? We need to focus on what's really important, what's going on in that person's life. Imagine if you went to a doctor, right? Because your heart was pounding out of your chest. And the first thing the doctor said to you was, hey, great. Yeah, heart, cool. Great. Got it. Hey, what's your budget, right? You'd be like, I got I to gotta get it. You can't get me out of this doctor's office fast enough. That doc, what's going on with your chest? Help me understand. You know, does it hurt in the morning? Does it hurt at night? Does it hurt all the time? Don't worry, you called the right person. We're going to figure this out. Let me ask you a few more questions. He would do a, he would definitely do a screening, I think. He would do a screening. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> our apartments, our homes, I realize we're not going to drop dead, but it's the next, you know, Maslow's yeah. hierarchy of needs, right? Yeah, it's right Oxygen, there. Oxygen, water, food, shelter. We're number four on the list here. We need to start treating our prospects with the dignity and respect that this decision deserves rather than just trying to pre-screen them and put them into a box that we're not even sure if that's the right box for them. Yeah, that's a great point. Uh, And so I'm curious, can you tell me a story of how you've seen these types of tweaks in the process make a difference in a real property management business? Yeah. And I mean, we've got a testimonials page on the website. I, I think last we checked, there was either a thousand or over a thousand of these. A lot of them are videos. One that pops into my head uh, was a property in a place called Alton, Illinois. Uh, very large community. I think they were under 400 units. Um, I was brought in for, for a live event uh, and the team there, they were working their tail off. I knew the instant that I saw these people, the problem was not the wrong people. The problem was not the, the property itself. It's a solid property. I mean, it's a, it was more of an fo- affordable type property. It was a good product, right? It's not the people. It's not the product. Um, they were at 67% occupancy, 67%, right? That's a scary situation to be in. That's, when you get down to 67, that affects everybody, right? Everybody is now wondering, will this be my last day at work today, right? Is, is somebody else going to come in and take over this community? It's not a good, a happy place to be. Definitely not. All we simply did was helped give them a process. I had them writing their goals down every day. Most importantly, I had them running to answer the call. Every call was answered within three rings. 
huge, right? They knew the right things to say when they answered. They found out what was most important to that resident. When they showed them the, the property, they focused on what was most important to that resident. They had a little sheet, a recap sheet, so they could say, hey, Tony, do you mind, before I show you the apartment, can I kind of recap my understanding of what's going on here? Tony would always say, yes, great, great. Based on what you told me, the kitchen is most important to you. The reason why it's most important to you is you've got some food allergies, you have to cook at home, you hate your current kitchen right now, right? What you want to see first is you want to see the fitness center because you're spending $80 a month on a CrossFit you know, membership. You told me <laughs> you hate it. I get it. I wouldn't want to do CrossFit either. So we're going to check out the fitness center first just so you can make sure that that's going to meet your needs. And we're going to, I'm going to show you 407, right? Hey, Tony, does all of that still match what you need? Yeah. Great. Did I, did I miss anything? No. Great. Has anything changed since we last spoke? I realized it was 10 o'clock this morning. Has anything changed? No, no, nothing's changed, right? We give them a system to where they're now treating this prospect so special and literally going through checklists with them. They went by changing nothing, same marketing campaign, same property, didn't put any vinyl plank in there, didn't change the countertops, didn't do anything to the property, didn't fire any of those wonderful people that were working there because they were rock stars. They just needed a process. In 30 days, they went from 67% occupancy to 89% occupancy. That's, that's great. That, those are the kind of uh, improvements you want to see. And, yeah, you know. just by simply taking each prospect through an organized process. The other great thing about this, what I heard from them is they were like, it was amazing because when it wasn't a fit, on the off chance that our property wasn't a fit, the people were still hugging us and high-fiving us and thank you so much, I really like it, it's not a fit because of this, this, and this, but I'll let other people know about the community. When you have the right sales process, you don't have to be pushy or manipulative. You don't have to be high pressure, right? Because your prospects are gonna let you know, wow, this is a great fit for me, I'm in or they're going to tell you, no, it's not. And if it's not a fit, now you can trust your process and go, no problem. It's not a fit for Tony, but I'm sure Fred's going to be calling me here in five minutes. I'm going to take Fred through the exact same process. It makes things easy for us. It makes things easy for the residents. It makes things easy for the prospects. Everybody has an easy time. Yeah, that's, that's an amazing point. And thanks for sharing that story. I think, uh, you know, one of the last questions and, and things I wanted to talk about with you uh, and we've actually talked a little bit about this before, specifically about the pent up demand that is you know, inside of the housing market right now. And again, just to reiterate why it's so important to get your ducks in a row, you know, at, at this point in time. And I'm just wondering why you think it's, it's important to, to be organized, especially given everything that's happening with COVID and, and uh, the pent up demand that we're seeing. I'm, I'm again, not an expert on COVID. I don't think anybody is at this point. We don't know. It, it, we could be done with this tomorrow. It could be two years. I don't know. I, I'm, I know I don't know. Um, it will go away at some point. But my fear is that when it does, which it will, um, I'm hoping there's not, but I have a feeling there is an unnatural amount of lease renewals where we didn't earn that lease renewal. So I'm, I'm concerned about that. I want to make sure that um, operators are prepared for that. Uh, and, and also, we just, as I said before, we just can't continue to race to the bottom anymore. We mm -hmm. cannot continue to try and achieve occupancy through short-term rent specials, through promotions, or through any sort of uh, manipulation on the dollar sign. It's time for us in the industry we have built all of this great product. Today's apartment home is more sophisticated, is better than ever before. The renter gets more for their dollar than ever before. It's time that we recognize that and start having a sales process that supports that, whether it's my process, somebody else's process, or they build their own. But we need to start treating the entire thing with the seriousness that it deserves, or else we're just going to continue um, to have buildings with, you know, occupancy numbers that are completely unstable. Yeah, I think that really sums it up uh, quite well. So with that, I want to, uh, to thank you, Matt, for joining me here today. 
uh, great conversation. We hope to have you, uh, you know, again in the future on another podcast episode. Huge fan of the show. Whenever you need me, I'm here. Um, and, and thank you. Thank you so much. It's an honor and a privilege. All right. And though for those of you, again, who are listening and want to learn more about what Matt does, you can check out his YouTube channel, uh, which is Leasing University. Um, and also he has a website, Matt, you can share that. Uh, leasinguniversity.com is the website. And if you want to call us, we're available anytime you need us at 888-735-7451. All right. Thank you, sir, for everything you do for the industry. And uh, yeah, it's great talking to you. Talk to you again soon. Wow. What an episode. His philosophy definitely uh, makes a lot of sense. And I know resonates with what we like to like to do here at, at Buildium. So I, I think especially with the way he, he handles things and he deals with that first part of the process with, with a, a potential renter, goes, he, goes, he goes a lot deeper than the average uh, person, I think. Yeah, I agree with that. He really harps on the, the fact that you have to ask the why. A lot of people, when they're dealing with, you know, exactly like he noted, objections and complaints. That's what real estate is. So those are the problems that you're going up against. Total side note here, all you listeners out there, take Chris Voss's masterclass on negotiation. Uh, you will just be blown away with how you can overcome objections and complaints by using tactics of mirroring, labeling, just total side note right there. Yeah, and marketing and communications, I think it's actually got a name. I think it literally is the theory of five whys. Uh, and it is so important to be able to get past what's on the surface. Like one of the things that he said was that, you know, residents have a hundred times more information available to them at, at, right at their fingertips than they did, you know, maybe even five or 10 years ago. And so the, the difference is the human connection that you make and in that relationship that you build, not just can you afford this apartment and when do you want to move in? But, you know, why are you looking to move to the area? Really in all industries, putting those relationships, those client relationships, those resident relationships right out in front and making that the priority is you couldn't do better work. Uh, and then just one last thought, uh, since he gave a shout out to Bella, we will give a shout out to Bella. We see you, girl. And I really enjoyed how he spoke about the property manager getting more involved in the leasing cycle and the leasing process and knowing everything about your properties, really selling them and trying to get to know the applicants and the renter. Um, so it's not just on the realtor or the leasing agent, it's the property manager because they're going to be your connection the whole time that you're living in an apartment. Um, so that was that was great. All right. So that just about does it for our first episode of season three. And what a great episode. It was awesome to hear about Matt's philosophy uh, on leasing. And you know, I know it resonates with what we do here at Buildium. So with that said, we have a lot of awesome stuff coming up in season three. We're gonna have more SMEs like Matt. We're going to uh, talk about the 2021 industry report. And we're definitely going to feature other leaders uh, in uh, the prop tech space and other people that are developing technology and tools for property managers to be successful. So I'm really excited. So with that said, it was great hanging out today. And uh, until next time. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Buildium's The Property Manager Podcast. Don't forget to subscribe to the podcast wherever you listen to podcasts. And if you like what you hear, leave us a rating on iTunes. The Property Manager Podcast can be found at buildium.com slash podcast. If you'd like to be a guest on an upcoming episode, reach out to us at podcast at buildium.com or on any of our social media accounts. Thanks for listening and we'll see you next time.